All right, we are ready for the very last video of the Creating a Design Process app tutorial. And for our very last job that we have to do, um, we're going to work on this Reflect and Share screen. We've already done Ask and Explore, where we have a description and a picture of what those stages look like in the STEM design process. We've done Plan and Create, where we have a sketch pad so that people can draw some design ideas and then um, start building their solution to their design problem. We also have a test and redesign page done where we have a description of what those stages mean and a picture that represents testing and or redesigning. And lastly, we're gonna work on this page right now. So the reflect and share is going to be a description of what that means and a text box to type a reflection in with a save button and a home button. So let's get started in Thunkable. We're gonna to go to our reflect and share page so that is right here in our dropdown. We're at Reflect and Share. Remember, the first thing we want is a label we're going to drag over. And this is where we're going to describe Reflect and Share. So you might say something like, Reflect on your design, what worked, what didn't, what would you change for next time, something like that. And you can decide what's important about reflecting and sharing and what you might want to um, put in this text here. Um, also, we need to put a text box here, something that people can type in when they're in your app. So over here, under on the, on the palette side, we have text box as an option. We're going to drag that over. Let's change the height and width to be parent on this as well. So as long as it's selected, we go over to properties. Let's do fill the parent just so we can have a large space um, that people can fill in as much as they want for that good reflection on their stem design. We also need a button to go home. Um, so I need to click outside of that. Okay, button. And the blue line is where it's going to go. I can barely see it behind that text box down there. There we go. And let's rename it to be home. And now we need to do some coding. So we have our text uh, box right here and we need to code it so that people can type inside it and save it. Um, oh, actually, we forgot the save button, so let's grab another button. Um, you know what? Let's rename this one to be save. That's probably going to be the best thing that we can do because we want button one to be save. So I'm renaming that. Sorry about that. And then we'll grab another button to be uh, the home button. Okay, so let's drag that over. And we have save and home. Now, let's get some coding done in the block section. So the first thing we want to do is when button one is clicked, remember that's our save button. When button one is clicked, we want to use a tiny database. Um, we're going to save the text that was written there. So we need to go back into designer to grab that tiny database. Again, I forgot to have you put that on there. Sorry about that. Let's go into storage and find the tiny database. Remember, a database is a place where information can be stored. What is the information that we are storing this time? We are storing whatever is typed into that text box. So let's grab from the tiny database. We're going to uh, store value. Okay, this is very similar to what we did with the picture. So we're gonna tag it with just the word reflection. I'm gonna use a capital R for that. Just capital R, not the E2. All right, so I tagged it as reflection. The value to store is the text from the text box. That's what we're storing this time. So let's take a look in the text box tab over here um, and scroll down. It's in here somewhere, textbox.text. Here it is. So that's what's going to get saved. All right, and then just like we did for the picture, when the screen is initialized, when this reflect share screen is initialized, I'm going to click on it here. Um, when it's opened, we want that text to still be there. All right, so we're going to call it back. So when reflect share is initialized, we need to set the text box text. So click on text box. Set the text box text. I'm scrolling to find those words. Set the text box text to. And now we need to retrieve from the tiny, tiny database over here. Uh, we're going to get the value that is reflection. Remember, you can duplicate this by right-clicking, and we'll drag it down here. Now, if there's nothing typed in there, we want it to stay nothing, so you can leave that blank. 
The only other thing that we have to do now is code our home button. So button number two was our home button. When that is clicked, we want to go home. Remember, control, open another screen. You should be able to do this with your eyes closed now. Text is blank right now, but we are going to type in screen one. Now we have done all the coding that we need to do for this app, which is fantastic. Now you have some time to go in and change some of the design of it. So if you want to do a background color, for example, if you want to change all of it to be a nice bright color or something like that, be careful not to put yellow on top of lime green or magenta on top of red or anything that's going to cause people eye strain, right? You want to make it look good. Um, you can change the size of these buttons. You can look at your different screens and see if you want to change your picture. Um, whatever you have time to do. And then when your app is 100% ready to go, it's time to export that app. There are two things that you can do. Under export, you can get a QR code right away, which is very similar to the testing that we've been doing. Um, you'll get this bar that loads that's telling you that's putting it all together for you and putting it into one QR code. And this is different from testing because it's, not, it's no longer going to be live, where if you make a change here, it will work. Um, on the app that you're testing. It's the real deal now. So when you scan this, you will be prompted to install the app onto your device. Now this is only good for two hours. So you can only do that if your device is sitting right next to you. Um, if it's not, I'll go ahead and click OK. You have a second option here, which is saving it to the computer. That's always a good idea. This APK file will download down here to the bottom. And then we can email that to someone that you know that has an Android device and they can use this STEM design process app um, when they are completing a STEM project. Um, so basically you, it does take a while to download. Um, it will go down and into the downloads folder and, and you can share that with other people. Um, but other than that, you have done everything you need to do. You've done a fantastic job and I look forward to um, checking out your apps. Thank you.